when there is violence of um, an authority figure like a policeman and the, it results in the death of a person in an inner city neighborhood, whose fault is it? And in our culture, on the evening news, do we ever see those honorable men and women in the blue actually have a human moment in front of the camera when they have to acknowledge the intractable nature of their situation and as a result, all of our situation, and they have, I'm sorry. Big words when you feel you have the right on your side. I did not grow up in Philadelphia, but I heard about the event. I heard about a particular organization, proud organization. They lived a particular lifestyle. The hair, the food, the clothing, something about it was of the earth and all organic. And they lived together in that house. And for whatever complex reason, that house became a threat to the neighborhood and the police department and the fire department. The helicopter comes over this home. It drops two containers that are incendiary. The house begins to become engulfed in flames. So this opera is about the people who lost their lives there. And as a good Haitian, the souls, those apparitions that are still there. We Shall Not Be Moved tells the story of five kids who decide to learn from the ghosts that are living in the ashes of the move house. It's supposed to be the first day of school, but the city ran out of money. And black schools don't return much on the dollar, so I guess closing them first makes the most sense. When I first began the libretto, the city of Philadelphia was struggling. It had just laid off something like 2,500 um, school workers, faculty, staff. Um, and uh, the mayor of the city was, um, you know, had to take out a loan in order to keep the, the doors open. So, you know, the first question that I asked myself was, you know, so w what would happen if the schools didn't open? You know, where would, where would the students go to learn? And I um, fearfully ran away from the complexities of um, everything that I was thinking. And I think as most artists do, um, I decided to run into the fire of it. The irony being that um, what I was writing about are kids and people who did not run out of the fire. And you realize I'm an outsider. I knew this as the rest of the nation knew it from the evening news. It's, an ob it's a privilege and sort of terrifying to be asked to come in and negotiate a work in which that event is background radiation. And it is radioactive still. This piece has almost two poles. There is Unsung, the young 15-year-old, self-styled Harriet Tubman of her generation. And then there's Glenda, who is also a woman of color, who actually comes from the same neighborhood as Unsung. My name is Kirsten Chavez, and technically I'm an operatic mezzo-soprano. And in this opera, I'm singing the part of Glenda Ramos, the police officer. Feeling like a victim of the system, that's why I joined the force. Get a flower picked and planted in the law. I am the law. I am the law now. Her first entrance, I am the law, she says it again and again. We have to wonder, is she surprised that she's the law? Is she... Uh, not sure of herself really in, an, in, an, in a deep way, which is why she has to say it again and again. It's almost like in the piece, um, in this particular aria, that she feels like she has to prove herself. She is conflicted. Um, she is from the streets of Philadelphia and now patrols the streets of Philadelphia. And I think that um, probably like a lot of um, people of color and people of color in law enforcement, um, I think she struggles with what is right and what is right. She's sworn to protect and serve, and she understands where Unsung is com coming from. She, uh, Glenda has dealt with violence in her own life, and you know it's clear that she didn't have the greatest upbringing. There's a lot of polemics on the stage, but ultimately it comes down to a very human confrontation. There's a point at which, for me, 
uh, when we're performing, when I have my very first encounter with unsung, and we try to have a bit of an exchange, and uh, it's not really going anywhere. It's like she's not yet invited me in. And I start singing this song, it's uh, Little Blackbird. And um, for me, that's the moment at which I see in unsung myself. And I see, for, I believe that, that unsung is quite possibly at a crossroads, maybe very similar to one that I encountered, where her life could go in a very dark direction, or with help, perhaps with Glenda's help, it could go in a much brighter direction. She's looking at herself in the future, and she doesn't like the choices that Glenda made. She's saying, Glenda, you're accusing me of something that you did yourself. And I think sometimes it's really hard for people to look honestly into a mirror and decide whether or not what they're seeing is what they want to be in the future. So I think Unsung is afraid of, she's both very hopeful for the future and afraid of the future, in particular, how it is manifested in Glenda. Who's right and who's wrong? There are nuances and gradations of culpability that can only be resolved in somebody taking responsibility and saying, I'm sorry for the part I played in this. Let's see how it works. I my brain. 